What's good? After a while of grinding, I've come to a solid conclusion on what my next stronger version of my PvE combo was going to look like. I had to make sure the combo improved and had logical changes that made sense for optimization. And of course, there will always be more versions of this combo in the far future, depending on a lot of possible changes or other variables. So that's why I'll name this one as the version 2 of my previous combo. And if you have any questions on the PvE add-ons, you can still check out my older video discussing the whys and what's. Link will be in the description as well as the console key input chart will be in the description too. And to give a brief summary, if you don't want the full detail commentary, the top part shows the buffs and add-ons I have for PvE, and each corresponding colored box will match the colored lines at the bottom. How long each line is is how long the buff duration lasts. And of course, the main timeline is the combo in order. As I said before, more in-depth information will be in my older video in the description. All right, let's showcase what the changes are. So at first glance, you probably can't tell the difference from my previous combo. So let's go ahead and show them first. First major change is going to be the beat kick and engulfing theory. What used to be shadow ignition into crow flare, then beat kick, then backslash and onward, is now changed to shadow ignition into beat kick into engulfing shadow, then backslash and onward. So the reason these changes happen is because of the flexibility beat kick has when canceling after shadow ignition. In fact, the only main reason I even used crow flare in the original combo in the first place was to get beat kick to flow right off of it. So we can get the necessary skill add-on buffs. So I decided to swap things around and instead make beat kick flow right after shadow ignition instead. And the only other option to flow into backslash to continue the combo was engulfing shadow. Not only was it an AoE super armor, but also carries its own debuffs that could come in handy as well. And the biggest bonus is that engulfing shadow does way more damage than crow flare. This small change could potentially make a subtle difference in trash load or clear speed. And before I continue on with the next few changes, I'm going to show you guys how to properly perform a beat kick after shadow ignition if you haven't already watched my succession cancel guide. So to pull this cancel off, you have to first understand how shadow ignition is as an ability. Shadow ignition is a two-part ability where the first initial pop is the flow. We can call this one the first pop. Then the second pop is the air smash. So shadow ignition is just a one-two ability. One-two, one-two, one-two. Now that you understand that, I'm going to show you when to use the B kick optimally with Shadow Ignition. After the second pop of Ignition, that's when you'll immediately use B kick using RB. This timing is very specific and needs to be at this exact timing, or you'll miss the window or cancel. Or if done too early, you'll probably cut the Shadow Ignition short. What happens if you use B kick too early is you cut half of Ignition's damage, which means if you let the first pop go through but use B kick right after, you don't get any of the second pop's damage. So that's why it's optimal to let both pop go through, then use beat kick right after. But here's the issue. If you're too slow, you'll miss the window and force your character to flail her arms around. So as you understand, this is a very challenging cancel timing for some that haven't practiced this. But give yourself one day to practice it and it'll come natural to you. So don't be hard on yourself and be patient. Now in the event you mess up the beat kick timing in the middle of a grind, don't worry. You can always use crow flare into beat kick for recovery then continue with engulfing shadow and onward. Next change is the abilities right before black wave and after dark flame. What's now going to happen is you'll iframe after dark flame, then use the abyssal flame cancel. Afterwards, to keep the 40% crit buff alive, you'll have to midnight stinger. You can use this on a mob or you can use this in a different direction to position yourself better. Using midnight stinger period is what gives you the buff. So whichever way you use midnight stinger is your call. You can technically short midnight stinger by pressing RB. This could come in handy if you don't want to go too far with stinger. Then you'll proceed with Black Wave as usual. The Abyssal Flame definitely helps to give the iframe a bit more of a purpose. Usually when you do finish off with your Dark Flame, you mainly just iframe nearby and just go into a Black Wave. So if you're going to iframe anyway, you might as well throw in the Abyssal Flame, which is a pretty quick cancel. And another thing with the Midnight Stinger at this point is that usually the Midnight Stinger is going to last up until like the entirety of your first part of your combo. So if you're going to just kill the camp, with the first part of your combo. You actually don't even have to Midnight Stinger if you know the Black Wave is going to kill them. Then the changes will mirror the first part of the combo for the last part. After you use Bloody Dream, you can then do the same combo with Beat Kick after Ignition and continue the combo the same way. Another alternative after Bloody Dream, if you feel like you don't need that many abilities, you can actually just go into Engulfing Shadow and continue the last part of your combo that way too. I do that myself sometimes if I just need one or two abilities to finish them off. Now let's go over the full combo in sequence so you can follow along. You'll first start off with a Midnight Stinger into scattering eruption cancel then shadow ignition into beat kick then engulfing shadow into backslash into violation into dark flame then you'll iframe nearby and use abyssal flame then quickly use midnight stinger again to reset the crit buff either on your mobs or reposition yourself 
Then black wave. After the fourth wave, manually use the pop damage into ultimate shadow eruption, then use crow flare into bloody calamity, then hit him with a bloody dream, then follow it up with a midnight stinger and continue back at it with gathering eruption cancel into shadow ignition, into B kick, into engulfing shadow, then backslash into violation and finish it off with the dark flame. So that's essentially the full combo of my version 2 succession PvE. There's a few things I want to mention before I end this video. First thing is the use and purpose of each part of the combo. Now don't get discouraged from the look of the entire combo. The full combo exists for multiple different reasons you'll find yourself in. Usually when grinding on succession, you typically use just the first part of your combo and finish off the mobs with black wave or, or perhaps the ultimate eruption right after. That whole part is going to be your main combo you'll use 100% of the time and mostly all you'll need. In the event there's still mobs left over, you're going in into a quick bloody dream transition is all you need after that. Now if you're gathering a big ass group of mobs or just very strong end game mobs, you'll definitely need to extend into the last part of your combo to finish them off properly. It's good to memorize the whole combo in case that ever happens. Last thing you want to do is find yourself needing to extend further but you don't know how. And lastly keep in mind Succession Sorg PvE grind has always had the reputation of a combo grinder. It won't be anything like Guardian or other classes that have to press 2 or 3 abilities to clear camps. Our damage is much more spread out in other abilities, and thus we have to combo way more than most. It's not to say it correlates to succession PvE grind to be weaker, in fact our combos and abilities are so fast that it's realistically the same duration as those classes that do use one or two abilities. Of course I'm talking about the first 8 to 10 seconds of the combo, not the entire thing. And that's going to wrap up the new version of the Succession Sork PvE combo. If you want more additional information on the skill add-ons and commentary of the chart, check out the video in the description. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you guys in my next progression series. Peace!